So without further ado, let's bring out Rod Reyes. Now lower your expectations. All you're getting is a broken down 66 year old Puerto Rican. I'm actually at the age and the stage of my life where I could be Chico and the man. <laughs> Wish I was running for president though, because those guys are go-getters. They get a lot of stuff done. It's like most of us, when we do chores, we have to make a list, right? We make a list and as we accomplish each chore, we scratch it off the list, except I cheat. So like if I have to do laundry and I put the bag next to the laundry machine, I say I did it and I cross it off the list. <laughs> but not presidential candidates, because they're always doing stuff on day one, right? So I'm gonna build a wall on day one. I'm gonna destroy ISIS. On day one, I'm gonna bring back jobs. On day one, I'm gonna repeal the IRS. I'm gonna revoke the ACA. I'm gonna fillet the NRA on day one. <laughs> I'm gonna get so much stuff on day one, there won't be crap to do on day two. <laughs> then I'm gonna pass a law saying every other subsequent presidential ca uh, candidacy will be of one day's duration. Because if you can't solve the problems of the world in one day, you don't deserve to be the leader of the free world. <laughs> I'm like, even God was like, dude, pump your brakes. <laughs> On day one, all I managed to do is shut off the lights. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I'm here, though. I don't even mind giving up my favorite TV show, Project Runway. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Tim Gunn rules my world. <laughs> exactly. You know you're watching a little bit too much Project Runway when the esoteric things Tim Gunn says start to make sense. Like Tim will say things like, I'm flummoxed, I don't know what kind of children's clothing needs ruching. And I'm like, uh-huh, that's what I'm talking about, dog! <laughs> Give it a chance, take a look. People think you can catch gay from watching it. <laughs> First of all, let me tell you something. If you like gay people, you will love Project Runway because everybody on it is gay. It is so gay, the kids from Glee wouldn't watch it because it was too gay. <laughs> if you don't like gay people, you'll love that show because nobody is meaner to other gay people than other gay people. <laughs> These queens are vicious. <laughs> like, oh, she thinks she can sew. This isn't Project Seamstress. <laughs> but I'm uh, annoyed because uh, it's ruined uh, some of my bucket list items and also ruined some shows that I used to enjoy. I used to like to watch reruns of The Silence of the Lambs. Great movie, and I used to love watching it over and over. But Project Runway ruined it because this guy would go around killing all these beautiful women to take their skin so he could sew up a girl costume. And I was like, that the, you know, that is so not the idea of Project Runway. <laughs> Why don't you just murder one morbidly obese man and alter? <laughs> That's your make it work moment. <laughs> I'm also annoyed with Project Runway because it totally ruined joining the KKK for me. <laughs> Come on, they haven't changed in 190 years. The sheets and the pointy hat, they look like the freshman class at Hogwarts. <laughs> and you would think, with the success of Project Runway, they would turn that into a challenge. <laughs> right, Heidi would come out. Good afternoon, designers. Please help me welcome your client for this evening's challenge, the icon of American racism, Bubba. <laughs> Bubba, tell us your fashion needs. Well, howdy, as you know, what we want is something a little versatile, good for uh, marches in the daytime, cross burnings at night, uh, something a little fashion forward, but not too faggoty, if I can say that. <laughs> something modern that says, we don't like black people, 
today. <laughs> ah. It's up to you young people to solve the problems of the world, though. You know, the problems of the world, your generation, my generation, we're doing everything we can. We're doing our share to make the world a better place. We're dying. <laughs> Racism, you fix it. Because you're the only generation that's bent out of shape because there was a hint that there might be a black James Bond. Ugh. I don't even like James Bond because he's too good at everything. <laughs> No matter what you do, how hard you practice or study, James Bond's gonna be better at it. If Javier Vasquez was riding American Pharaoh and James Bond was on a mule and they had a race, James Bond would win. And they'd interview Javier after the race, like, Javier, what happened? Well, you know, uh, the door opened and he went out around the first turn. I thought I had a lot of horse underneath me, but he's James Bond! You can't be James Bond! And women can't resist him. He comes along with his buttery voice, like, Bond, James Bond. <laughs> Just once, I'd like to see a woman say, you know what, you're a cute enough guy, James, that I'm really into black men. <laughs> I think we have to uh, examine the language that we use to insult each other. I don't even know how some of these things become slurs. You know what they used to call Irish people? Mix! You know, I'm sorry, is somebody helping? All right, okay. Thank you. Let me do my act like you have sex alone. Uh, all right, so where was I? Slurs, Mick! Guy's walking down the street. Hey! You're a Mick! I know, it's me name. How'd you know? Do I know you? <laughs> no, no, you're a Mick! I know, short for Michael. No, nah, it's an insult. Well, have you got anything better? <laughs> You're a patty. No, that's me cousin. <laughs> you know what they used to call Italians? WAPs, which was short for without official papers. So they were the first undocumented aliens of their time. So don't think of Mexicans as illegal aliens. Think of them as more Italians. <laughs> Now, what they call Puerto Ricans is insulting. They called us spicks, and I didn't like that. And I'll tell you why. Because it's based on a, a language barrier. No spick of the English. But the Italians were the first original spicks. They were the first one. No spick of the English. So I'm insulted because basically, my people got a secondhand slur. <laughs> Like the Italians were like, well, yes, now that we've mastered the English language. <laughs> I think the worst is what they call Mexicans. They call them wetbacks. That sounds like a skill set. <laughs> I mean, if you can cross a river and only your back gets wet, you're a damn surfboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, should we talk about gun control? <laughs> well, why not? I'm not for taking away anybody's Second Amendment rights. I mean, the founders put that in there for a good reason, just like they omitted eliminating slavery or giving the vote for women because they know what they were doing. We have to think about you know, some of the root causes and what's what. How about a little training? Not every weapon is, co co is created equally. Like my license qualifies me to drive a hammy, not a semi. <laughs> Finally, he laughs. <laughs> But we have to examine some of the root causes. There are places that actually want to limit the magazine capacity. California passed an ordinance limiting the magazine capacity of weapons to 10 bullets. Because as everybody here clearly understands, it's the 11th bullet that actually kills you. <laughs> the first 10 just sting you and make you annoyed. <laughs> like you're walking down Rodeo and somebody rolls up on you and is like, 
And you're like, did you just shoot me four times? <laughs> we have to examine the root causes. A lot of people think that watching violent videos creates gun violence, and that's ridiculous. If watching videos had an impact on what your actions were, then every man in here that's ever watched porno would want to get a job delivering pizzas. <laughs> I mean, I grew up watching some of the most violent cartoons in the history of American broadcasting. I mean, right? Mice running cats through a meat grinder, Rabbits blowing up ball guys with speech impediments. <laughs> Wild dogs dropping anvils on the heads of birds. <laughs> and the worst one of all was Popeye. Popeye was a bow-legged, squinty-eyed psychopath <laughs> that was obsessed with this eight-foot skank with feet the size of skateboards. <laughs> And he couldn't go five minutes without beating the living crap out of his best friend. Now, I think I was about six when I figured out spinach didn't do crap. <laughs> and even if it did, the bigger kids could eat it too. <laughs> then when I was eight, physics started creeping in. Like, Popeye would squeeze the can, right? And the lid would pop open, and the spinach would shoot out of the can in a perfect arch into his mouth. Do you know how many pounds of pressure per square inch you have to exert to open a can with your bare hands? The spinach was a placebo because he was obviously strong enough to do it in the first place. And the can always opened from the top. It never opened from the bottom. Long averages, spinach all over the floor. Popeye going, get, 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 get. five second rule. You know, maybe if Popeye had eaten some brain food, he would have figured out a better way to get with Olive. And he'd be like, hello, Olives. I bring you a pizza. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to leave you with this because I, I'm, I'm sorry. I owe you an apology. I'm a cranky old guy. But I come by it honestly. It's those commercials I watch on TV, those late night commercials, the ones that try to sell you medicine. The things that say, is Crest all right for you? That's between you and your doctor. Oh yeah? If it was such a good idea, how come he didn't think of it? <laughs> how many times you ask somebody else for a second opinion on drugs? You go to your weed dealer and say, hey, is Kush right for me? No. You spark it up and you smoke it and enjoy it. But they'll say things like, uh, Oh, Crestor may lower your blood pressure, but it will also create swollen ankles, bloody knees, fiery diarrhea, explosive urine, stomach cramps, loss of hair, loss of vision, death. <laughs> I'm like, Crestor has more side effects than crack. <laughs> crack only has two side effects. You gobble the bologna and you lose your teeth. <laughs> and if you're gay, that's only one side effect. <laughs> You guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. My name is Rod Reyes.